Hey boys, welcome back to some more NRL Supercoach. It's going to be the round seven review and we, <sighs> I don't know. I mean, we've consolidated the last couple of weeks. Obviously, we've seen green arrows. We, we've scored okay. This week, I mean, as the title will suggest, Nico Hines has saved my week because, <laughs> I mean, we, you'll, we'll see in a second, but we, we had some, we had some good scores, like some decent scores across the park, but Again, just just not having any centre wingers that are going that you know eighty plus, a hundred plus, and uh, and obviously the Kalen Ponga low score really hurt us. So we'll uh, we'll get into that in a second. But yeah, we scored a thousand and eighty five. I was, I mean, it's fine. Like having a having a captain go as big as Hines. It could have been like again. It could have been one of those weeks where we really sort of kick on and 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 get a big one over people. But because Hines, I mean, he was he was a popular captain choice, but he definitely wasn't the most popular. Um, but it is what it is. We jumped four and a half thousand ranks, so we're still. I mean, we're still languishing in twenty odd thousand, but we're we're moving. We're moving. Um, all we can do is just uh, you know, because the depth of the team is good. I think we're set up pretty well for the buys and everything. We just you know, hopefully things can start going our way and um, just get a little bit a little bit of luck to go our way would be nice. But let's go through the team. Um, there's yeah, there's a couple of big important decisions to make this week pending team lists for sure so dummy hearts reese uh, reese robson 45 i mean i'll take it the cowboys were absolutely putrid and robson i think he only played like 70 minutes like honestly fine on if, if Payne wanted to give robson a rest this week i'll take it um because i think yeah he he didn't play the the back end of that game what did he play? Yeah, 73 minutes. Like, hopefully there was nothing there. I don't think so. I think it was just one of those games where the Cowboys were gone. Payton, I think, just took the opportunity to give Robson a bit of a spell, which is fine. 45 points. I'll take it. Obviously not the best, especially because, I mean, this is one of those ones where, like, Lus obviously Joey Lusick, absolute shitter. Like, <laughs> he's... <laughs> oh, he's trash. But he got a, he got a try assist, so... People, a lot of people would have played Joey Lusick and he got like 70 odd points so that's a that's a little 20 30 point swing but I mean it's fine that's, that's what happens with uh, dummy halves if they if they get a try assist if they get a try they're going 70 plus if they don't they're getting like 50 points that, that's just the way the the position is Jaden Braley we brought in 48 points it's good I think did he play the full 80 I think he did which would be nice yeah he played the full 80 um he looked, I mean, the Knights, again, were, they were bad, but Braley, he looked, he looked pretty good. I mean, obviously, getting through his defensive work, he, he ran the ball a few more times than he had been, so I'm still happy with the trade. Obviously, we traded Coruscant down to Braley. Obviously, Coruscant, I mean, this is the one thing I, I, I sort of forgot to mention when I was trading Coruscant, but if you, for me personally, having two, like, gun dummy halves i think is overkill but if you just own coruscant obviously going to that panthers game you weren't expecting a big score from coruscant he is obviously very attack reliant so if you own coruscant i definitely wouldn't be sort of jumping out of my way to trade him out because he's, he's gonna have the game where he obviously with the goal king he's got the goal king as well if they score a few tries if he's involved like if you own coruscant with your number one hooker i definitely wouldn't be looking to trade him but just for my position and and the fact like Robson and Coruscant potentially could both play Origin I think it was it was the right idea and it's good to see Braley playing the 80 minutes hopefully that is the the uh the plan going forward because again I'm not really looking to pr play Braley unless it's in a in an absolute pinch but if he's gonna make some good cash and, and be a be a potential number, then it's it's nice. And also, it freed up cash. We got a nice little kitty in the in the bank to spend. Uh, Josh Curran, fifty nine points. He could have. Oh, right, Jamin Salmon. Oh, we all hate Jamin Salmon, right? Fucking <laughs> Curran had a try assist of a kick, but of course, Curran the uh, Curran the absolute dog. Not Curran Salmon. <laughs> 
<laughs> Seven, the absolute dog, um, spills the ball over the line. So that's uh, that's that's great for our boy Karen. Um, but yeah, still still very good. I'm I'm obviously happy I, I brought in Curran still. I mean, I know Joey Manu fucking he saved himself with a try in that game. Um, but I still think for my team overall, going Curran was was the right play. Obviously, he's on a bye this week, but we can cover. That's fine. Uh, Terrell May with 37 points in about 30 minutes. I. <laughs> I don't know. You're like, I, I'm not. I'm honestly not concerned. I know there's people concerned about it, but again, at the end of the year, it's an average. I mean, look, he's averaging close to 57 points. Like, he's if he's going to go like 80, then 30, then 50, then 70, like, it's fine. If you play him every week, and the minutes are there, and then they're not there some weeks, it doesn't really matter because you're not captaining Terrell May. Obviously, a guy. If it was a fullback or a halfback that was going like up, down, up, down, up, down so violently, then that's an issue because you couldn't reliably captain them. But Terrell May, you're not captaining anyway. So like, it's fine. Just plug him there. Surely Robinson is, I don't know. Like I, the minutes are just, they're just all over the shop at the moment. But that's, um, that's just the way it's uh, panning out as, uh, at the time for for Terrell May, but I'm not I'm not too concerned. Sam Hughes, of course, he <laughs> every time we do not need Sam Hughes in our team, he he uh, he scores big, but he's gonna make good cash. Obviously, he's gone big. What did he get like seventy odd last week? Was that last week or the week before? But he's had a couple of big scores. He's going to make a bulk bit of cash. Um, I mean, I I don't think I've played Hughes once in my team, so I haven't. I haven't reaped the rewards from the from the points, but I still think Hughes at some point is going to be a perfect nuff out. Like I think I think Hughes nothing out to a dual front row, second row forward is going to be the optimal play in my opinion. Um, but yeah, as long as you're making cash, that's fine. And uh, you know, if needed to play, hopefully he can he can do something. Uh, Liam Henry, obviously, we kept hold of. 27 points. Um, it's fine, obviously, with the with Fisher-Harris back. And, I mean, basically, the, the Panthers' full strength. Like, it was always going to be a bit of a worry with the minutes. He only played the 29 minutes. Uh, hopefully, I mean, obviously, coming off that head knock, uh, maybe there was just... They were easing him back slightly. I will need to play Liam Henry this week, so... I mean, 30, if he's 30 points, it's not the worst. Like, that's why I wasn't that bothered with, like, holding Liam Henry at a pinch. Um, hopefully, he can just jag a few. If he can get up to, like, 35, 40 minutes, score 35, 40 points, that'd be fine. Also, hopefully, Penrith... Okay, Penrith do actually play late in the round for once. So, this... Back to my initial strategy of having, like, cheapies in the front row, I might be able to finally use, like, the sort of gimme loop because I'm going to have to play Henry anyway and if my vice captain goes big then I get a again a basically free loop from Henry um so that's fine honestly having Henry there works out uh, a bit of a treat as it stands um then we move on to the back row Eli Katoa 85 points you love to see it he could I mean <laughs> he just looks he just looks so damn dangerous. He could have had more too because he had like quite a few negatives. He had a couple of penalties, a few errors. Um, but yeah, 85 points, just fantastic. They must have, in updates, they must have given him that try assist to Hughes. I'm I'm guessing because he's only on like, I thought he was only on like high 60s. So yeah, they must have given him the try assist, which is fair. Like he, <laughs> he was a beautiful pass. I know Hughes did a lot of the, a lot of the work, but it was still great work by Katawa, so I think he deserved it. Angus Crichton, 52 points. I mean, I saw a lot of discourse on Twitter that he was underscored, and i got to be honest, I thought he was too. I, I <laughs> He updated like th a, a couple of points. I think he was on like 50. Um, I was expecting him to probably update to about 60 because I... Yeah, I just thought he they missed a lot of his um his points, if I'm honest. But yeah, 52 in base stats. Like, I, I he played the full 80... Obviously, still a worry with Roosters forwards and back rowers. Is he going to get spelled at some point? Maybe. I don't know. But uh, he's looking good. He looked dangerous. There were, there were time, like, 
against another team, I, he would bust through and get a couple of uh, attacking stats. But the Storm, obviously, very good defensively out there tonight or the other night. Sean Lane, 64. I will take that every day because the Eels were abysmal and short like i mean watching this game like obviously the eels started pretty well sean lane scored an early try it was great but you could tell i mean it was hot in darwin and the eels were just gone but like after half time they were absolutely off their feet and sean lane you could just tell like he, he <laughs> i actually thought he was going to get subbed off because he was just not making any like not much effort he, he could barely move and i was like thank god he scored that try because he is not going to get any more points for us this game <laughs> and he didn't really um so thank god he scored the try otherwise he would have had an absolute shocker out there uh kai pierce paul 84 points the gift that keeps on giving we played both firmore over smithies which it looked like a good uh, decision and it's still we we did get a few points from it uh firmore did downgrade a bit he was on like 50 odd but of course, my play is downgrade, so he went uh, back to 49. Morgan Smithies, he did play reduced minutes, but he still banged out 45 points. I mean, that was the main reason I didn't play Smithies, just because he played the full 90 the week before. So I was like, surely he's not going to play. He's going he's gonna to get a bit of a spell in this one. And obviously, the Broncos uh, put on a bit of a show against the Raiders. Um, so that was fine. Nico Hines, our saviour, he updated to 142. You love to see it. I mean, I, I would have liked a few more if I'm being greedy, just because it, it, it was a big swing either way. But oh, if he just could have... Like the last 20 minutes, obviously the Cowboys had a bit more possession and the Sharks didn't have too much of the footy. But I was hoping it was going to be a bit of a vintage 160 plus for Hines. But I, I cannot complain with a 142. It definitely saved my week. Uh, Luke Brooks with a 41. Oh, again, this game, bro. Like, he had he, he had an early try assist. Also, he downgraded badly as well. I, 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 he was on, like, 50 points, but he downgraded to 41. He had that nice early try assist to uh, Jason... Was it Saab on the wing? Yeah, it was Saab. Beautiful cutout ball. And I was like, okay, we're on... But no, of course, we weren't on. And uh, yeah, just didn't, I don't know. I mean, all the Manly boys, even for such, for such a high-scoring game, that I'm trying to think who was the high scorer. Probably Cherry. Was Cherry Evans high scorer? I know Tommy only got like 80-odd. Garrick didn't score well. Ola Kuatu obviously went about 80 with a try. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess the points were just all shared around so much that no one really killed it, thankfully. Um, that's the one silver lining here is that Tommy Trebojevic, he scored two tries and only, I think he, I don't know if he updated too much, but hopefully he was still like under 90, which is, ooh, that is a that is a sigh of relief right there. But Luke Brooks, 41. I mean, I am I am hoping, I am hoping Nathan Cleary is back this week because, got to be honest, I am very... I'm very keen to get rid of Luke Brooks. <laughs> I mean, I, they're taking on Parramatta at Four Points Park. So, I, I, you know, if I have to keep him again, surely there's a big score coming for Brooks, right? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's fine. Either way, it's fine. Uh, we got the money in the bank to easily go to Cleary if he's back. Ethan Strange, 30 points. You know, it was bound to happen. I mean, the Broncos are a very good team. I actually thought the Raiders would give them a bit more trouble because I thought their forward pack was really strong against the Broncos. But Broncos, just really, really good. And uh, Ethan Strange, I mean, again, he was he was bound to have a low score in him. It's fine. I mean, Lucky Galvin came back against Penrith, scored 35 points in, in basically just base. So... I mean, the 5'8", like, I, I, granted, I probably, ideally, I would like Strange probably in the center wing and have another 5'8 option because Strange in the center wing would just add more depth to our center wingers and just give us more options, but it's fine for now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit unsure what to do with the 5'8". It's like, I'm happy to have the cheapies. Well, they're not really cheapies anymore, but I'm happy to have these two long term, but... I still would like Strange in the center wing. I mean, Maxi Plath, 
I, I, it would have been nice to jump on him, but he's probably getting a little bit out of, uh, out of, well, not out of reach, but probably a little bit expensive now for what he's going to bring. He's not going to score two tries every week. Uh, our center wing is, the, I mean, this is where we lost a lot of points. Like, everyone went fine, but just no no big scores. And we'll get to the one guy in a second. Um, so, Val Holmes, 54. He also downgraded. He was on like 60-odd, but of course downgraded. Roger, 47. Again, just no real attack. Like, the, the Warriors just, they just don't go to him. But his base is still good. Like, I, I don't know. It's one of those ones where he's averaging 60 still. People are... People are losing it a little bit, I think. I don't know. Like, I guess it's the problem that guys like Lomax and and Bostock and, and some other guys are going massive. You look at a score like 50 and, like, that's a massive decrease. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely not looking to trade him out. But I guess if if you got no other issues, then sure. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too concerned. James Schiller... 35 points. We did have to end up playing him, obviously. And Kale Eero, 53. Oh, how good. How good is Kale Eero looking? Only 53 points, but man, he was looking dangerous. Like, just the base stats. Um, no attack in this one, so fantastic. And then our fullbacks, <sighs> Ryan Papenhausen, 52. Honestly, this the... Oh, just the worst trade of all time. Honestly, I, I've made quite a few mistakes this season a couple of them like then not necessarily terrible trades but they've worked out poorly but honestly trading Tommy Trebojevic to Papenhausen it was just it was a trap like looking back it was obviously in hindsight it's easy to say but like looking back it we just didn't have to trade him like I know Papenhausen was coming off a big score and Tom was coming up against Penrith so you didn't expect Tommy to get like a hundred but he did that's fine but even looking back, it's like they had one bad game against Penrith and then they had a pretty good draw. Like, I I don't know. It was a bit of a silly trade looking back on it, but what can you do? And then Kalen Ponga with a 14. Obviously, he had the hit pointer coming in, but then he has now injured his foot. I don't, I don't know exactly what the injury is, but it's reported to be a pretty serious injury or at least a, a pretty long-term injury. So a couple of months he's looking at on the sideline. So Kalen Ponger is obviously a trade out at this point. Um, and the one guy we didn't talk about, Blaze Talangi with, <laughs> I mean, you don't want to see anyone get hurt or concussed, but it was like Dijan Arce getting knocked out there, Blaze Talangi, he only got the 12 points. He did make a little bit more cash. Ah, yeah, his break even is now 44. Hmm. I mean, obviously, it's team dependent. Like, I'll be I'll be surprised because obviously, RC is going to be out for this week with that uh, concussion. I'll be surprised if Talangi isn't put back into 5'8". I mean, maybe they do go with like a Brendan Hands or, or maybe someone else. But like, surely Talangi gets the recall. If he does, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to trade him. Like, a break even at 44, he might lose some cash. But I think at that point, you've just got to hold him and, and hope, he, hope he goes well. He, he, he'll be a playable option at the, at, at, in a worst-case scenario. So I think, I think for people that held, I think you probably just hold on again. Hope for the best. Um, so yeah, hold on to, uh, to, to Lungy, hope for the best. If he can score well, then, I mean, he's probably, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Like he might play this week, but then if Arcee's back the week after, but if, if the Eels go well, cause, I mean, I gotta be honest, Arcee hasn't been very, I, I don't really think the Eels have been that much better with Arcee and the team. So if Talangi and the Eels can have a good showing against Manly this week, then he, he could keep the spot again. So I think just, yeah, just hold him. There's no, there's no reason to get rid of him at this point, um, at least this week, in my opinion. So that's the rundown. I mean, looking forward, um, again, I think we're, we're set up pretty well to, to probably start saving some trades. Although, I mean, that we're probably going to be using two trades this week. <laughs> there's no real, well, there's no real way around that. I mean, Ponga has got to go like the, Unless it was, I don't know, like even it, 
I think it's pretty much confirmed he's gone for a couple of months. Like, I don't know. If there's a miraculous recovery or it wasn't as bad as initial thoughts, he's still got that hip pointer injury. Like, I I think Ponga, regardless, is a sell. But then, I mean, we have so many options to go to. That'll be... It'll be exciting to, uh, to open it up a little bit. And then, obviously, dependent on... Nathan Cleary. If Nathan Cleary is back, we actually have... I mean, we, we have a few options because obviously, originally we brought in Dom Young basically for Cleary, the, the worst fucking trade of all time. <laughs> but we did... I mean, it was a work a workaround way because we obviously swung Brooks up to halfback, Strange up to 5'8", and brought in Young. So we, we could either trade Brooks straight to Cleary or we could swing Brooks back down to 5'8", Strange back down to the center wing, and trade one of our center wingers out for Cleary. <sighs> I don't know. It's a tough one. I mean, Luke Brooks, they take on Manly. He's got a 66 break even. Uh, fuck, dude, I'm all over the shop today. They take on the Eels. <laughs> I, I, I think Brooks... If you don't trade Brooks, who would you want to trade out? Like, I'm not trading at Holmes. Tulvashek, I'm, I'm fine to hold Tulvashek still. Schiller, I think you hold Schiller for now. He's only got a 43 break even, so I think Schiller, I mean, he's almost peaked, but you never know. They could go on a bit of a run. Like, who have they got coming up? They got, I mean, the Sharkies have been really good defensively. They, they obviously turned it on a bit in attack, but defense they've been pretty good the Sharks I'm not expecting big scores from Schiller there Manly Dogs have been good they do, they do play round 13 so I mean if if Schiller could just hold his price I, I wouldn't mind just holding him to round 13 but that's yeah you never know he could have a couple of low scores and and start bleeding cash so I think that's 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 a wait and see on, on Schiller uh, Kale Eero, I, th I mean, if he keeps the spot, he's an absolute keeper until the end of the year, if, I if I'm being frank. Like, he, he looks so good. He's had no attack. Um, I mean, the first game he played, obviously, he had some attack, but his base is great. He plays round 13 as well. Um, obviously, tough game around 12, but then 13. I mean, Parramatta Eels is actually a pretty tough game in the bye because Parramatta, they're not going to be missing too many players. I mean... Yeah, Moses is Moses even back? I don't I don't even know. He's out for a fair while, but um yeah, it's it's a bit of a tough game actually for the Sharks in the bye, but that's fine. Uh Tail and May. Oh, so I did that's right, we didn't talk about the boss stock thing. So obviously Oh my god. Is it again a 50-51 man, like oh absolute killer the boss stock situation. So Taylor, I knew Taylor May was ruled out like before I made the trade. I was I was already like, ah, uh, actually when Taylor May was playing, I wasn't even looking at trading him out. Then when he was like with the personal reasons, I don't know what it was, but whatever, regardless, I was definitely it was fifty fifty for me. I was like, do I trade out May or trade out Bostock? It was a tough choice. Um, and obviously, if I didn't trade out Bostock, I would have played him over Schiller. So there's a 100-point swing right there. <sighs> Just thinking about it. It hurts my head, dude. But <laughs> but I, I sort of... And it was tough because Taylor May plays round 13... Also, Bostock played round 13. I was like, who do I trade out? And I pretty much just came to the conclusion that... Although Taylor May is a better long-term option than Bostock... I still think Bostock... You know, you're going to have some low scores in there. Taylor May is more solid. I, I would rather have Taylor May for around 13 than Bostock. And I'm going to make an extra 100k off the trade of Bostock. Obviously, that did not work out in our favor because if, like I said, if I traded Taylor May, I would have played Bostock over Schiller 100% because I did not like the Schiller matchup against the Bronx. But that's uh that's super coach this year for us we just we just cannot get those 50 50s right um uh but yeah hopefully taylor may for the love of god you better repay me <laughs> you better be back this week for one if he's not back i don't know i fuck he better be that's all i'll say <laughs> And he better repay me over the next few weeks and, and score well in the buy. Otherwise, oh, 
it's going to be an absolute shocker. But yeah, Bostock, you know, who, who are the Dolphins? They got the Knights. Oh, it's a pretty good matchup for Bostock again. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I just can't even look at him. But let's um, see so yeah. it. That's the trades. I mean, let's have a quick squeeze. Trading out Ponga. Because we will have to trade out Ponga. We can get anybody. I think... Is he the highest... Is he the most expensive fullback anyway? I think he is. I know Dylan Edwards and Drinkwater are slightly ahead. So Dylan Edwards... I mean, I... I, I think you've missed the... You've missed it on Edwards. I, I think people might be tempted to bring him in for Ponga but like Cleary is tipped to be back this week if he's not back this week he'll be back like soon you would think so Edwards will lose the goal kicking which is a pretty massive loss um he's been killing it anybody that has got who went on Edwards like a few weeks ago have been rewarded but I just I wouldn't I wouldn't be going Dylan Edwards at this point Scott Drinkwater I mean, he is very tempting. He obviously only got 57, but he still got, he still scored 57 in that schlacking. His break-even is 156, but, it, you know, the money's not the issue. The draw isn't great, though, because they take on Penrith this week. Oh, man, they actually... So, this is a tough one because you don't... You wouldn't want to trade him in this week, but do you really do you really hold Ponga? Do you really only play one gun fullback in this coming week and just hold off drink water, wait for him to lose cash against Penrith, and then bring him in for Dolphins, Gold Coast, South, Tigers, Roosters in the bye? Maybe you do. Fuck, I don't know. That's that's very tempting. I mean, obviously, you could just bring him in this week um, and and just take... You know, he could score well. He, he could go all, all right against Penrith. It's not like a given that just because they play Penrith, he's going to score low, but it's, it's obviously a little bit dicey. If Cleary is not back, I would be slightly more tempted to go early on drink water. If Cleary is back, then maybe you do hold the trade. I'm definitely, like, Tom Jabroyevich, I'm not going to lie, I was somewhat, I was somewhat like, do I just bring Tom Jabroyevich back in for Ponga? I don't know, though, like, I, I mean, they take on Parramatta, which is, like, Parramatta should be a good matchup, but surely Parramatta come out fired up in this one, like, right? Like, I know it's at Four Points Park, then they take on Canberra at Four Points Park, then Dolphins... So it's 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 a th- three good matches, and then Broncos Storm by Penrith. That's I just don't really. Hmm. I think I've just got to ride it out with Tommy and not bring him back in. Chansey, like I'm not, I, I'm not that keen on Chance. Like he's going great, but he doesn't play round thirteen anyway. Um, they have a couple of good games, but then a bit of a tough draw. I wouldn't go Chance. Any other fullbacks? I mean, not really. I think I. I mean, I. I guess Reese Walsh is the guy that people <laughs> people are definitely gonna bring in Walsh. Like, hundred percent. He's coming off a big one. He's obviously dropped. He's six hundred k. Oh my god. Oh. You might just have to go Walsh, right? Like he's six hundred thousand. He takes on Tigers, Roosters. Do you do you bring in Walsh? Tigers, Roosters, Paramount, Manly, Gold Coast, which is great. Then he misses. I mean, uh, he'll play Origin now, especially with Ponga out injured. So Walsh will be the fullback. But then he's got the buy anyway. And then Sharks. Mm, that's tough. We'll have to think more about that. It's out. Of, I mean, for me, it's probably out of yeah Walsh or. Or drink water, and then do we decide if we're gonna go, if we save the trade on drink water for next week? You could do that. It's it's crazy, and it could be a bit of a week where you're like, okay, we're just not gonna score that well this week with only one gun fullback. But 
you could do it you could do it but we'll, we'll talk more about trades later i think you know we do want to start saving some trades and i guess it it, it also depends on if cleary is back i'm hoping he is because i think a lot of people like I've got a lot of money in the bank and I can do anything with it. A lot of people might be in a, a bit of a tough boat with Ponga now out. So they're like, okay, I got to trade Ponga and then also bring in Cleary. I guess Ponga is going to free up cash for most people anyway if they bring in Walsh. So it's it's not too big an issue. But yeah, hopefully Cleary is back. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Would I rather him back or not? I mean, I can go straight to him, but everybody else probably eh, people might be i don't know it could be a bit of a swing either way but i don't know the rest of the team i'm, I'm pretty happy with i mean I, we still need to upgrade our center wing um i mean hopefully T taylor may is back uh but yeah we, we got money to spend either way on uh on some positions let's have a look see so yeah, low max i mean yeah, yeah. <sighs> he still scored 82 which is like man he's looking so good like at this point i'm like do i bring him in because he's probably going to play origin right he's also eight hundred thousand, so i i just i i think i think lomax is just he's he's past me at this point <laughs> and just just praying on his downfall joey manu is 68 yeah tommy thankfully he didn't update no unicorn points he only got 86 which i will take with two tries against the titans Ronnie Mulatalo, 94 points. Of course, he had to score two tries. Um, Oli Kwatsu, 81. Okay, yes. Cher Cherry Evans didn't do that well. Only 55. Finnell Blake. Ben Hunt, 118. 9% of people have Ben Hunt. Oh, my word. That's crazy. Matty Burton is killing it. Uh, Jacob Kiraz. <sighs> Honestly, Kiraz... Kiraz after the buy could be the guy to target because he's back on the wing. The dogs are looking good. Like, I mean, I don't think you can really keep saying the dogs aren't looking good. Like they they are. His base I mean, he's he's sort of low max with the base stats, he just doesn't have the goal kicking. So for two hundred K less, I actually really like Kiraz. For for after his buy. This could be a beautiful like Schiller to Kiraz move. Cause then they've got Tigers, Penrith, obviously. <laughs> Penrith tough, but he's still got the base stats. Then you got Canberra, Dragons, Newcastle in the bye. Yeah, this is a lot. Oh, Kiraz would be great because play the first major bye, then they play the backup. They miss 15, which is fine. Then they play 16 and 17. <sighs> or oh, Kiraz. <sighs> yes, Kiraz 100%. And hopefully people forget... Because obviously he's got the buy this week. He's only 2.4% owned. So no one's going to bring him in this week. And then hopefully people forget about him. <laughs> because you're not going to have the, the big score from the week before. Um, show up, maybe. But uh, yeah, definitely Kirai's in a couple of weeks, I think, is uh, is the play. Um, yeah, the rest of it, it's, just, it's team dependent. We're, we're going to look to trade Ponga. And then if Cleary is back, we probably just bring him straight back in. But other than that, we, we can actually start saving some saving some coin. Oh, not coin. Uh, we got plenty of money. We can start saving some trades in the next couple of weeks, which will be nice. But uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys are, are going going along nicely as well. Starting to uh, to see some green arrows. I mean, I think we're, we're in a decent spot, but we just can't quite can't quite get over that hill um getting a big score when other people don't but yeah we'll see we'll see this week could be a bit of a i don't know especially if we don't get a, another gun fullback could be a bit tricky but uh we'll see we'll see what happens uh hopefully you guys are enjoying the content make sure to like and comment and i'll see you guys in the next one